few months ago, the shul received a copy of uh, the latest volume of Tchumen, which is a scholarly journal that's put out by, uh, um, by an institute in Eretz Israel, And they're up to volume 31. It's got some really fantastic articles in there. And it was given to us uh, by Baron Dasberg, whose father of blessed memory used to be the editor of the Tchumen Journal. Baron is one of the shlichim here in our community. And so uh, I really enjoyed uh, 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 looking through it and uh, reading some of the articles. And one of the, the articles that particularly caught my eye was an article about electric signage, electronic signage in shuls on Shabbos. Now this has become very, very popular for shuls to have electronic signs in the Beit HaKnesset and in the lobby also to announce to people what's going on. We have one now uh, an electronic sign in our base medrash to tell us what the Yismani Hayomar, what the, what the times of, uh, of Nates and, uh, and Alos and, and Talos and Tfilin and Kriya Shema and Tfila and Shkia and everything you could imagine you have available to you. Today, there's no excuse for a person to say, I didn't know what time it was, uh, what the time of davening was. We have other excuses, but that's certainly not one of our excuses. And, um, and uh, furthermore, um, we're going to be soon, we're going to be moving into the 21st century at the Bayat, and we're going to be getting electronic signs for when you walk into the building, like they have at other shuls. And we've already got the funding in place, and we've got the technology. We can make them bigger, faster, and stronger, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to be building this uh, very, very soon, and, um, and, uh, and that's what, uh, and that's what you'll be seeing happening, we'll put it, we're going to be putting up two new electronic signs, which really immediately raises the question, do we really want people to check football scores on Shabbos on our electronic signage? In other words, what should we be putting up there? What about pictures and photos and movies? And we could put anything we want in order to really attract people to want to attend the programs that we're, that we're doing, the shiurim. We could put up uh, little clips from kosher tube on the, uh, on the thing. Is this appropriate to have on Shabbos? I mean, are we going to have people uh, standing there and watching the signs and not coming into davening? And is there a halachic problem of having these electronic signs on Shabbos if they're really that captivating? Or is there any, is there any problem? So let's take a look and see. There are some very, and this is really what the essay, this is an essay that was written by Rabbi Moshe Cohen. I'm not sure which Rabbi Moshe Cohen this is. But he wrote a very, uh, I thought, a very well-researched and thought-out essay on this very topic. And so I'm culling from his research and from his, the conclusions that he makes at the end of the essay. And I'm just here to present the findings to you and let's discuss it and think about it. The first thing that we should be aware of is that Chazal, instituted different rules as far as the things that we're allowed, the kinds of mundane affairs that we're allowed to engage in. We know that there are many takanas that Chazal instituted for the laws of Shabbos, and we're learning so many of them in the Daf Yomi presently. For those of you who are part of the Daf Yomi Shir, you know that there are many that we just learned about. The, the most uh, interesting, the, the two that we just learned about in the just in the first few plot of, uh, of, the, of, the, of Maset the Shabbos is a person is not allowed to read by the light of a candle on Shabbos Shemayate because he may come and tilt the, the flame and increase the flame and do a malacha. Another thing that a person is not allowed to do is not allowed to put food onto the fire, onto an open fire even before Shabbos Shemayachate B'Gucholam and he may come and stoke the coals on Shabbos itself. So you see that there were many, Chazal viewed it as their mandate especially when it came to Shabbos to create fences around the observance of Shabbos and make sure that a person wouldn't come to do a malacha. And in the same vein, they took their cue from the Nevi'im to ban certain activities on Shabbos that would perhaps cause a person to immerse himself in commercial activity or to talk about things that are not going to be l'chavad Shabbos or in the spirit of Shabbos or going to bring him back into this very Gashmi is a world. And we're going to see different nuances of this. And one of the things that we know when it comes to Hilcha Shabbos is that it's very difficult to be Medana Milsa La Milsa. It's very difficult to compare different takanas to each other. Chazal even make a point of saying this. Is that sometimes when Chazal banned something, they allowed for no exceptions. And sometimes they allowed for certain exceptions. And we don't necessarily always apparently and readily see 
the reasoning behind why sometimes they were very tight in one area of, of legislation, and in other instances they were a little bit looser and more relaxed. So let's take a look at this halacha, which has to do with um, the rules of what we're, what we're allowed to talk about on Shabbos, what we're allowed to read on Shabbos, and that will hopefully open up the discussion for what electric signs and shuls. So the Rambam says in, Hil in Hilcha Shabbos, the 24th chapter at the very beginning, this is source number one, he says, Yesh devarim shehein asurim v'shabbos, afal pi sheinam domin l'malacha, ve'einam mevin l'dei malacha. He says, there are certain things that Chazal banned, even though these activities do not resemble malacha, work on Shabbos, nor do they, is there a fear that engaging in these activities will actually lead a person to doing malacha. Why then were they banned? As it says in Yeshaya, that you have to desist on Shabbos, your legs from doing your regular mundane activity on my holy day. And you have to honor the Shabbos from, and, and the way that you honor the Shabbos is by not engaging in the normal week, weekday activities and not talking about normal weekday activities. And therefore, a person is not allowed to travel to his normal business places or business places where he conducts business. Nor is he allowed to even discuss business or mundane activities. For example, you're not allowed to discuss with your partner, your business partner, what you plan to buy or sell. Nit uh, Shabbos Garet, right? How much is your car? Nit Shabbos Garet. And then you know, you know the old joke, right? Nit Shabbos Garet has already been sold. Yeah. Anyway, oh hey chiv na or you're not allowed to talk about. And certainly, uh, uh, the Rambam doesn't even have to tell us that to do this in shul during davening is doubly prohibited, right? And of course, we don't have to mention that. Oh hey chiv na and uh, uh, you shouldn't talk about what you're doing for the construction of your house, the addition that you're making, or, or what type of merchandise you're traveling with uh, and, and going to be going to China tomorrow, whatever. All of these kinds of things are usr, shenemar, vidabir davar. As the Pasuk says, you should not speak about these things. Dibur usr, hirhur mutter. That speech is forbidden, but thought is permitted. And of course we also know, we also so recently saw this in, in the Daf Yomi, that uh, for L'Tzorech Mitzvah to talk about doing Malacha, such as finding, uh, you know, deciding how we're going to raise Tzedakah for Pidyon Shvuyim or for other Mitzvahs or for Achnas Kala and so forth, those things are permitted on Shabbos. But this is the standard prohibition. And if you notice, the Rambam said that these things are prohibited not because they may bring you to do malach. So one of the things that we're going to see is, is that there are certain things that we're not supposed to be reading on Shabbos. One reason could be because of mimitzel chetzach avidabr dover. Another reason could be because it could lead me to do malach. So keep that in mind, that both of those possibilities are present in all of our discussions tonight, but they're two separate issues. One thing might be prohibited because it might lead me to do malach, and another thing might be prohibited because of the mandate of the Nevi'im, which, which tells me that you shouldn't engage in mundane activities on Shabbos. Okay? Two totally separate takanas. We take a look... Is, is this a Drabbanan then, or is it a Divrei Nevi'im? It's Divrei Nevi'im, but Divrei Nevi'im in Halacha has the status of a Drabbanan, unless you want to create certain subtle distinctions. But, but usually the divrei neviim, they, they don't. There's, there's no mitzvah de oraisa in the words of the neviim. It's all it's all their That's why Purim is their rabbanon. Right? It's also a divrei neviim. Okay. So the Gemara now says, Amar Rebbe Nechemia. So this is in source number two from Shabbos Daf Kuf Tezayin Omid Beis. Amar Rebbe Nechemia. Mipnei Ma Amru Kisve Hakodesh Ein Korin Bahem. Now this is a, we're coming in, in the middle of a discussion. There's a mission in Shabbos that says something startling. It says you shouldn't be reading biblical text on Shabbos. You shouldn't be reading, you shouldn't be learning from a Chumash on Shabbos. And so there are a number of different reasons that are discussed in the, in the, in the Meforshim and in the Gemara 
One reason is, is because on Shabbos is when the Rav gives a drush and he needs people to hear certain very important things that he wants to convey to the community. So by you sitting in the base medrash and you learning, you're losing out on the message that the Rav needs to give over to the Kehillah. This is brought down in the Gemara. Take a look at Rashi on that mission. Right? It's an astounding concept. They shouldn't even be sitting and learning the base medrash when there's a when there's an important message that the that the that the Kehillah needs to hear. So that's one reason. But the Gemara offers a do- another reason why you're not supposed to read or learn from a Chumash and from Kisve Kodesh on Shabbos. Kadeshi Omru Bikisve Ha Kodesh and Korin Vikol Shekain Bishtore Hajotas. And the reason is is because once we tell people not to read holy scriptures, they'll know that certainly they shouldn't be reading business documentation. They shouldn't be reading contracts, they shouldn't be reading um, their business manuals and business materials and commercial affairs they shouldn't be reading about on Shabbos. Now the question is, why is it that the rabbis banned the reading of Shtari Hajotos? Shtari Hajotos was not clearly discussed by the Rambam, although one could argue that that's subsumed under everything that the Rambam said in the previous source. Well, Rashi explains, there's a machlokis here between Rashi and Tosfos as far as the scope of what Shtari Hajotos are. Now if you learn, uh, there's two ways, there's two possible ways of understanding it. Shtari Hajotos could be any written materials, even a newspaper, or even a book or a letter that you receive from a friend, those things could be prohibited because they're all subsumed under the word hedgeot means a commoner, so it just means any kind of uh, any kind of text that uh, will take you away possibly from the oral <laughs> conversations that you're supposed to be having on Shabbos, which is very very far reaching, and as we know, it's generally not accepted that we are so machmir that people should not read any text at all on Shabbos and really understand as well that when this law is legislated, it's legislated at a time when written text is quite scarce. So this is not something that uh, we can really relate to when the written word is ubiquitous within our, within our, uh, our purview. So um, the one, that's one way of understanding it and that's the way Rashi understands it. Rashi says, Shtar hejotos kagon shel cheshbonos O igros hashluchos limso chefes. Rashi says it could be um, uh, uh, pieces of paper or books that have ledgers of calculations on them. Let's say you know the uh, literally your your books, the books of your business or of your personal bank account. But it could also be letters of salutation that are sent to you from a friend. It doesn't literally have to be business materials. But Tosfos disagrees, and Tosfos says that it only, it only is limited to business affairs. If you take a look where we won't have, we won't read the entire, the entire Tosvis, he says, Venir Lurie, which is in line two of that Tosvis in source number four, Delo Kari Shtari Hejotos Ela Shtari Chovos V'chayot Sebohem. That that's not what's called Shtari Hejotos. Only Shtari Chov, promissory notes, and business notes, and business papers, and things like that would be subsumed under Shtari Hajotos. Aval Igaros Shari, but letters are permitted. Now we're not going to get into the laws today about reading the newspaper on Shabbos. That's, a, that's, a, that's an old issue. It's discussed among the poskim today. But let me just mention as an aside that certainly, um, while we can definitely permit someone to read the newspaper on Shabbos, as many of the Gedoli Yisrael of a previous generation did, but one should be careful what sections of the newspaper he or she reads, and certainly what kind of newspapers. Something that's exclusively devoted to business affairs may be prohibited even according to Tosfos to read those kinds of newspapers on Shabbos. And certainly there could also be problematic to read advertising um, or, or, or magazines that are exclusively for the purposes of advertising, like uh, things that are sent in the Jewish community to advertise different services for the Jewish community. That would be problematic even if you don't hold like Rashi and you're more limiting in the prohibition according to Tosfus. Okay, so Tosfus explains, he says, the reason why Igarot, the reason why letters and the like are permitted is because the Pamim Shihish Ben Pikuach Nefesh, 
ואפילו יודע שאין בו פיקוח נפש מטה רבינו תם, ולא אוהב אשתרי הג'יוטס, כי אין שאין צורך למה שקוסר בו, לפי שיודע מה שבאיגרוס. ואם אינו יודע שמא יש בו צורך גדול או פיקוח נפש ושרי. So Tosfa says, he says, look, sometimes a letter contains invaluable information which could even result in saving a life when you receive a letter from abroad. Of course, these are things that we also have difficulty relating to because we have electronic communication that is so much faster. And sometimes he says that even if when you know what's in the letter, you know that there's nothing, um, there, there's nothing harmful in the letter that has to do with, with, uh, with, uh, with business affairs, so it's not going to lead you down that path. And then, Tosfa says at the bottom, he says, Umihu osan milchamos haksuvim balaz. He says, however, if you have um, chronicles of wars that are written in a foreign language, or Rashi is referring to something that was well known in his day, a certain kind of literature, which people would read about uh, the wars of France, or the wars of the Rhineland, or so and so forth. He says, it would seem to one of the Baliyatosos that you shouldn't be reading those on Shabbos. We're going to see this Gemara very shortly. Um, and therefore he says that um, the, the, the Gemara we're going to see uh, shortly says that you're not allowed to read captions that are under illustrations on Shabbos because, not because it's going to lead you to business affairs, but because it's like a Moshe of Leitzin. In other words, it's wasteful, it's, it's, it's Bittel's man, it's, it's a waste of your time and it's certainly not appropriate for Shabbos activity. That too has to be quantified and limited properly. And, um, and certainly one has to question all the other kinds of literature that one reads on Shabbos. There are many postgimits written, brought down in the Shulchan Aruch. <laughs> that one should strive to only read Torah texts on Shabbos and not to engage in other <coughs> kinds of reading. But of course, then one has to think about what's the alternative. In other words, what, what madrega am I holding on? If I'm on the madrega that if I don't read a good book, then I'll probably do something worse than reading. So then reading a good book is a good, is a good thing on Shabbos. If I'm on the madrega where I could either read a novel or I could read uh, some Torah, Torah parshanut, so then certainly a person should strive for the higher level, okay? In any event, that's again also not our topic. Let's go now go to the Gemara that Tosfos was citing on Daf Kuf Mem Tes. First, it's the comment is of the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Mona Adam is Orchav es Parperosov mi piva valominaksav. A person is allowed to, if a person is having guests at his house for a meal on Shabbos, how is he supposed to itemize? and know exactly what the menu is and how, how much to serve to each guest and who's on his guest list. So the Mishnah says that you're allowed to recall this in your mind, you're allowed to, you're allowed to recite the names of your guests and you're allowed to let the, uh, the waiters know exactly what you want to serve and when. That's perfectly fine. You're the balabas, you can do that. But you're not allowed to do it if it's read, it read from a list. If it's read from a list, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to read off the names and you're not allowed to read the, the food that's being served at each course from a menu that you're not allowed to do on Shabbos. Surprising, it's, it's a mission, yeah? So um, the question is, why is that not permitted? So the Gemara asks this question, and the Gemara in Daf Kuf Mem Tes Amad Aleph says, Umar Maitaima, and we have a machlokus over here. Rav Bibi Omar Gezeir Hashem Yimchok, and Abaya Omar Gezeir Hashem Yikro Bishtari Hajotas. So it's a machlokus between Amoroi, between Rav Bibi and Abaya. Rav Bibi says, we're worried that you may come to erase the names on the list. When you realize, hey, this list is too long. I got too many guests coming over. You'll be tempted to erase, to scratch off a name, uh, and that will lead to a malacha on Shabbos. Abaya says, it's not because of the concern that you'll come to do malacha, but like the Rambam said, we have this issue of shtari hajotas. We have uh, texts that we're not supposed to read on Shabbos. Now, it would seem that the reason why you're not supposed to read Shari Hajotas according to this Gemara is not because it's going to lead you to do Malacha, but rather because of the uh, enactment of the Nevi'im that said don't engage in mundane activities on Shabbos. So therefore you have two different reasons that are offered by the Gemara. But it's now, about hosting on Shabbos. What's that? It's about hosting on Shabbos, not a mundane activity. <coughs> Yes, but it's prohibited because it falls under the rubric of Shtari Hajotas. Shtari Hajotas, as we saw, 
The scope of Shtar Hajotas is debated as far as how large the scope of it is. Some say that, like Rashi says, it extends even to reading letters, right? And uh, the question is, how far is the scope? So uh, certainly Abaya would have a more expanded scope of as far as where Shtar Hajotas extends to. The Gemara asks, my Benayu, what's the difference between the two? Now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Ika Benayu de Kosova Kosovo Midli. The Nafkamina is going to be is that if you have a list of guests that's written on the wall, like one of these, okay, and it's high up on the wall so it's not easily accessible, you'd have to get up on a ladder in order to bring it down. So then the Gemara says, if the concern is that you'll come to erase the names, that we're not choshesh for, because it's not accessible to you that you're going to pull it off, you're going to have it in your hand and want to come to erase it. It's on the wall. Okay, that's, so therefore, if it's because of Shema Yimchok, you have nothing to worry about, and it's perfectly fine. But if the concern is reading Shtari Hajotos, so then there is that same concern exists because you're reading writ that is inappropriate for Shabbos under the rubric of Shtari Hajotos. So now the Gemara says, So the Gemara says, but according to Rav Bibi, why aren't you concerned that allowing you to read the menu on the wall, you should also be concerned that you'll reach Shtari Hajotos. And furthermore, since when can you tell me that if something's on the wall, you don't have to worry that you're not going to erase it. And here, this is, and this is very, very important, this next line of the Gemara, because it really reveals to us Chazal's thinking in being Madama Milsa Lamilsa and trying to compare two completely disparate Takanas Chacham. But the Gemara says, we see that there's a similarity between these two Takanas. He says, because Vahatanya lo yikra lo or haner. We know that Chazal made a Takana that you're not allowed to read by candlelight on Shabbos. And what's the reason? The reason is, is because Shemayata, that if the candle is right near you and you want to get more light, you may be tempted to tilt the candle, and by tilting the candle, you'll be increasing the flame, and by increasing the flame, you'll be doing the malacha of Havara on Shabbos. That's what the Gemara says is the problem. Now, you would think, therefore, that if I have a candle or on a chandelier that's 20 feet above me, then there shouldn't be any problem of reading by the light of a chandelier. You would think such a thing, right? Because there's no concern of Shemayate. But that's not what the Gemara said, at least according to Rabbah. And because Ba'omar Rabbah, Afilu Gavoash Te Kamos, Afilu Gavoash Te Mardeos, Afilu Asarabatim Zel Gabeze, Lo Yikra. Rabbah had said that no matter how, how high the light source is, even if it's 10 stories high, you're still not allowed to read by candlelight, even though the concern of Sheme Yate is no longer present because you don't have, it's not within your access to be able to tilt the candle. And so the Gemara says, if the concern of not reading a guest list on Shabbos is because you may come to erase, what have you accomplished by posting it on the wall to make it no longer within your grasp? We see that in a similar case, even though the candle is no longer is not in my grasp, it's still going to be us, or it's still subsumed under the original Takana. So we should argue that this case is as well, subsumed under the same Takana. We skip a whole bunch of stuff in the middle, and comes along the Gemara and says, The answer is, says the Gemara, that it's a machlokis as to whether we paskin like Rabbah or not. There are some rabbis who say that, that we don't hold like Rabbah, that if the candlelight is really that high, you are allowed to read by the candlelight. It would seem that's how we paskin, because we don't have a problem by reading by candlelight as long as it's not mamash on the table. And so therefore, you have this machlokas between these Amoraim, whether you're choshesh for, for Rabbah or not. According to Rav Bibi, who says, yimchok, that you may come to erase it, that still exists even if it's hanging on a wall. But according to Abaya, that doesn't exist anymore. And therefore, the only problem is, is because of Shtari Hajotas. That you, through allowing you to read the menu, you'll come to read mundane things as well. Can you have place cards set at a bar mitzvah? Can you have place cards at a bar mitzvah? That's a good question. It seems from the poskim that the answer is yes. Why that's different from a guest list is probably because there's no concern of Shema Yimcho. You're not going to come to erase it. Why, who's you, you going to erase your own name? 
What? You just throw it away. But but not only that, but there's no reason. As we'll see in just a moment, the only time that there's a concern of Shema Yimchok is only when you're the host of the affair and you have a list of names. But if there's only one name on the card, there's no concern that you're going to erase that name. No, I understand. I understand, Jeff. The guest list up on of course. The wall. Okay, so the guest list is something else. You should really leave that in the hands of the of the shamish, of the person who is the employee of the shul, because if you have the planner, the person who's organizing the event, then there really is this concern of Shema Yimcho. Please be taped on the wall so everyone Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I have to ask a question. Curious. <clears throat> the idea that by erasing a name from the guest list, it changes the person showing up at your house is peculiar to me. Mm-hmm. What's the impact of erasing the name? The impact is is that uh, there's a, a sentry at the door, and you tell uh, because you've got a whole bunch. You've got this the wealthiest uh, guy in the community is making a private lunch on Shabbos, and um, people come from all over. And uh, the sentry says, um, you must be on the guest list. He's got wearing his tux and tails, and he says, you must be on the guest list. And then when you find your name on the guest list, they say, announcing Rabbi the David Stryker of Willington, or something like that. Yeah. And so, and that's how they, and you know, that's the, the oldest, uh, what, what's the, whatever. Anyway, the old, the old Cinderella movie, whatever. In any event, so, that's how they would do it, right? Okay. So, in any event, um, so the Gemara now says, uh, the Gemara just tells us that this is a, a machlokes, um, and the Gemara brings to wit, the Gemara brings the Tanya Mona Adam es Orchem Ves Parferosum Mipiva Volominak Sav, Rabbi Acha Matur Mifdav Shal Gabi Hakosev. But Rabbi Acha says that as long as it's on the wall, it's okay. So hey chidami, ilay medichsiv mitas alecha shem yichok el alav de kasav umidli shma mina de rabbi tanoi yishma mina. So you see that the fact that there's an amora that says that as long as the menu is posted on the wall, it's okay because you're not going to come to erase it. It's it's pasted or or attached to the wall in some way, and it's high up. So then you don't have to worry about Shema Yimchok, and that's why it's permitted, at least according to that Manda Amar, if you learn that the reason is because of Shema Yimchok and not because of Shtari Hajotos. And therefore you see from there. Now the last thing that we want to see in that Gemara, and then we'll go into Shulchan Aruch, is Tanu Rabbonam, Ksav HaMahalich Tachas Atzur V'Tachas Atyuknaos, also Likros of Shabbos. This is what Tosos had made reference to on Dav Kuf Tezayin. And here the Gemara says that if you have um, captions that are written under illustrations and under images that are uh, like paintings on the wall, you're not allowed to read that on Shabbos. Tosav says it had to do with Bittel's man, but comes along if you take a look at uh, Rashi he says that the reason is, and this is in source number seven, he says um, he says that the reason is, he says, what kind of captions would people have they would have different kinds of animals, and they would you would write down under the animal what uh, the, what species of animal this is, or they would talk. They would have a, a, a portrait of a person and write his name underneath and say what he was famous for, or they would depict a uh, an artistic recreation of the war of David and Goliath. Rashi says, and they would put a caption underneath of David. Uh, this is David with his slingshot killing Goliath. And um, and and Rashi says also the cross of Shabbos Shema Yikra Bishtare Hajotos. And Rashi says that this too is prohibited, lest you come to read Shtari Hajotos. But it's all under that rubric of Shtari Hajotos. Yeah. Okay. So now where are we going with this? Now, so you're starting to see that there are certain problems with different texts on Shabbos. And even if one is going to be liberal in their own home, but certainly in a Beis HaKnesis, if there are going to be things that even, that, are, that captions under illustrations are us, so we're starting to see that there may be certain issues that we have to be concerned about when it comes to movable text and text that's on a, on a wall that you're reading from on Shabbos, right? So let's see. Comes along the Shulchan Aruch and says, first of all, tell, tells us the Halacha, um, and uh, we'll, we'll skip through the Sif itself because it really just is a reiteration of the Gemara about inviting guests. 
It says that you're not allowed to read a guest list and you're not allowed to read a menu list on Shabbos. And, and the Shulchan Aruch says, Afilu im hukasav al gabi kosal gavoa harve, mishum shema yikra bishtari hejotas. The Shulchan Aruch says, even though you may have obviated the problem of shema yimchok, the Shulchan Aruch says there's still a problem of shtari hejotas, and that remains. And therefore we're machmir, and we tell you that you cannot read these things even if they're posted on a wall on Shabbos. Avol imchokak bekoisel chakika shokaas mutr. There's one exception that the Shulchan Aruch allows for is that if something is engraved in a wall. So there, there's really no problem of Shema Yimchok because, and there's, it's also no longer doymet to Shtari Hajotas. Shtari Hajotas is documentation that's written on text or, or parchment that uh, resembles a business document. But if something is engraved into a wall, it's no longer doymet to shtari hajotos, it's no longer similar to shtari hajotos, and therefore no longer can be subsumed under that decree. He says, But if it's a movable tray that has engraving on it, that too you're not allowed to read on Shabbos because of shtari hajotos. So you see how far the Shulchan Aruch is machmir for written text. Take a look at the Mishnah Bura, and the Mishnah Bura says, that, and we're not going to go through the entire um, Mishnah Bura, but I just wanted to bring out in Sifkat and Memzayim, the Mishnah Bura brings us from the Mogin Avram a very interesting dispensation. He says, reading for the purpose of a mitzvah may be permitted. And that's the underlying section. He says, Ach kisha ha he shall mitzvah yesh lahakel. Ha kriya lahashamish dehavi bichlal chefzeh shamayim deshari. He says, the rabbis, when they banned the reading of documentation, they only banned things that are of a mundane nature. But if you're making a Sudas Mitzvah in your house and you need to read the guest list, then we could permit the Shamish to, uh, to, uh, to read the guest list and to see who's invited because L'Tzorche Mitzvah, the Chazal, did not extend their decree. Okay? So that's an important uh, dispensation right there. And we have to know how far to extend that and how to apply it. We'll go later. Jose, he says, um, he says, the culture came to mutter l'shamish l'achrus cruz bebeis hamedrash mitoch haksav, and therefore certainly it's permitted for the the gabai of the shul if he needs to read something or the president needs to make announcements in the shul, wishing people mazel tov, that he's certainly allowed to read that on Shabbos, because this also is, uh, I guess. For the for the tzorech harabim, which falls also under the rubric of tzorech mitzvah, you need to publicize who's ha, who has simchas and who and uh, and so forth. And then he brings from the shari tshuva, which I didn't underline, but it's just fascinating. He brings from the shari tshuva that there's another reason to permit the shamis, the the fellow who's the butler with the tux and tails, to uh, to read off the names on the menu. You know what the reason is? He says. He says. He says, uh, he says, even when it's a Sudas Rishus, you can permit the Shamish to read off the list, the Al HaShamish Me'ikar Lo Gazru, because they never decreed against the Shamish in the first place. They only decreed against the Balabas. And this is going to be relevant for our discussion as well. The Balabas is a person who has the authority to cross off names. The butler does not have the authority to cross off names. So the only person that cannot read from the list is the Balabas. But the butler can, is, is allowed to read off the names, because he's not going to come to erase. He says, And he says, the reason is, is because we don't want, if we don't give the shamish a proper list of guests, then terribly destructive things could potentially take place, like the famous story of Kamsa Ubar Kamsa, where perhaps they didn't have a formalized guest list with names properly written out. And that's why Bar Kamsa thought he was invited when he really wasn't on the guest list. Yeah. So, but if the if the butler has a careful guest list, we'll be able to avoid korbans. We'll be able to avoid very, very destructive and explosive situations with machlokas and things like that. Okay. The next Mishnah Bura, in, in which was, we're skipping a little bit further, in Sifkat and Memtes, the Mishnah Bura talks about chikak bekosel. He talks about something that's engraved in a wall, which the Shulchan Aruch says is okay. He says, so the Mishnah Bura just wants to point out to us, he says, Mishum de Shema, the Mishum Shema Yimchok Leka, the Chakika Kevin Shushokas Kashali Yimachek. 
He says, there's no problem of Shem Yimchok, as I spoke out, because you can't erase something. It's very difficult to erase something that's engraved. But he says, but Shtari, and also it's uh, something that's engraved in a wall, is very dissimilar to Shtari Hejotos, and therefore they, they won't be confused with each other, and that therefore doesn't fall under the, under the, the prohibition of Shtari Hejotos. Let's skip on, and, um, and let's, uh, let's move on. Sif, Sif Yud Gimel in the Shulchan Aruch and Simon Shin Zayin continues, and he writes, Shtari Hejotos are prohibited, and if you notice, the Shulchan Aruch is very machmir. The Machaber says that what's included in Shtari Hajotos is not just what Tosva says, it's not just business affairs, but he writes even the Igaros Shel Sheila Sholom Osulikrosa. Bafil Laayin Bamalokriya Asa. Even just to look at them without reading the words out loud is going to be Asir as well. And again, I say to you that we have to understand this in light of the technology that was available back then, that the written text was very scarce, and also that we have a machlokus rishonim as to the, as far as how far this takana extends, and therefore there is room in the latter day poskim to even be more liberal than what the Shulchan Aruch says. The Mishnah Bura, however, provides two reasons as to why Shtari Hajotos or Asr on Shabbos, and as, I, as even though the Gemara itself had implied that Shtari Hajotos is not because it may bring you to do Malach, and certainly not, that's not the way the Rambam learns. There are some Rishonim who say that Shtari Hajotos is a self usr of Mishum Shem because you may come to erase or write something in the text. So just keep that in mind that there's two opinions as to why Shtari Hajotos uh, themselves are, are, are usr. One is because of like we saw from the Rambam, and the other one is because of Shem Okay, we skip down to Sif Tes Vav in the Shulchan Aruch at the very bottom of the page, bottom of page two, and the Shulchan Aruch writes, Kosal Ovilon Sheish Botsiros Chayos Mishunos of the Yuknos Shal Bnei Adam Shal Masim. If you have a wall or if you have a tapestry that has the, the uh, illustrations of animals or different images of human beings and of depictions of scenes of, and of events, Kigon Milchamos David Begolias, the Kostim Zutsiros Ploni B'Sedikim Ploni. Also, Likros Bov Shabbos, you're not allowed to read the caption that is under the illustration on Shabbos. Fine. So this is all codified in Shulchan Aruch. So where does that leave us? So let's just see one more little stop before we get to the bottom line. And then we'll get to the bottom line. Okay? Number nine, the Rashba writes that um, he says that, you know, we saw from the, uh, from the Mishnah Bura quoting the Magen Avram. The Magen Avram in turn is really quoting the Bach that the, uh, the prohibition of reading a guest list is only when it's, uh, it's, only, for, for, it's only for a non-mitzvah. But if it's L'tzarech mitzvah, we could, be, we could be permissive. The Rashba, in his Chidushim in, on Dap Kuf Memtes, says that there is another dispensation, another leniency that we can provide as far as reading captions on the wall for under under illustrations and he writes the nafkamina hecha de kori achrini bahade the lekam yishum shem yimchok the kol chad v'chad midkor lechavrin when it comes to reading captions or other things where chazal prohibited it because of shem yimchok if indeed the reason is because of shem yimchok and not because of shtari hajotos so then we can find leniencies in situations where you know for sure that you'll never come to erase one was the case of the shamis where we said he can't erase it other, another argument is if you have someone else that's with you, if you're in a public setting and you're reading a caption, so then you know, or you're reading of something that's on the wall, so then you know you're not going to come to erase. Why? Because each one of us will remind the other person. We actually had this just today in the Daf Yomi. Those of you who remember, we were learning about the Gezeir of Shema Yechata V'Gecholim, that a person is not allowed to build a fire even before Shabbos, if he might be tempted to stoke the coals in order to be able to burn it more brightly on Shabbos itself. And the Gemaras gave an example of where there's no problem, which is when the Kohanim are working in the Beis HaMikdash, and there was a, something called the Beis HaMoka. There was a place where they used to warm themselves up by the fire, a certain chamber. The Gemara says it's not a problem for the Kohanim to build a fire right before Shabbos, even though normally people would be tempted to uh, stoke the flame, and therefore we should prohibit it, Midor and even uh, starting the flame before Shabbos. However, the Kohanim are Zrizim, the Kohanim are all together, 
they're going to remind each other that, you know, hey, don't, uh, don't poke that flame. It's a malach on Shabbos. And so the Rosh besides this, he says, Right, he says that there's such a halacha when it says that you're not allowed to read by candlelight, if there are more than one person present, if you have more, if you have a group of people sitting at a table and we're sharing the candlelight, the Gemara there also says, as long as we're reading from the same text, then I'll see what you're doing, you'll see what I'm doing, and therefore there's no problem of reading by candlelight because we'll remind each other, hey, don't touch that candle. Okay? And the same thing is true by Asara uh, Mistafkin, Balun Tesechas, and Pirkin Dechavis, when it comes out to wringing out a towel on Shabbos, if there's multiple people sharing the same towel, we'll remind each other, hey, don't, don't wring out that towel. Okay? Now, the Prima Godim cites this when he discusses this halacha of, uh, of reading a guest list and of reading captions, and he therefore wants to say that the, the halacha could be mitigated at least according to the opinion who says that it's usr because of, um, of Shema Yimchok, that isr does not apply, or that concern does not apply if there are, if there are multiple people that are present. Now, is there still a problem of Shtari Hejotos? Perhaps, but again, we see that this whole prohibition of Shtari Hejotos is a little bit nebulous as far as what is subsumed under Shtari Hejotos and what is not subsumed under Shtari Hejotos. Certainly, from the Shulchan Aruch's perspective, he takes a very, a very machmer dika position that everything is subsumed under Shtari Hejotos. But it's not so pashta that everyone is going to subscribe to that. And based on this, and based on other sources that we're not going to go into this evening, this Rabbi Cohen in Tchumen writes the following conclusions, and this is what we'll just read now. This is at the end of the, uh, end of the essay. And he writes as follows. Luchos, luchot elektroniim. That he says that um, these electronic boards that we post in the shul have the benefit of many, many different um, circumstances which, which we've presented in the, in the aforementioned text, which may provide us a solution and to enable us to use them on Shabbos. Number one. The regular parishioner does not have the ability or the authority to adjust the text on these electronic boards. Is Gabi Friedman here? Right. The only one that has the right to adjust the, uh, the, the times in the, uh, in the base Medrash Luach is Gabi Friedman. So this may not apply to Gabi, but it applies certainly to everybody else that um, you don't have the ability or the authority to change the text. And so therefore the concern of Shem Yimchok does not exist, right? Now, by the way, in a lot of these very sophisticated electronic boards, you need to have a keyboard and you need to have access to a laptop and it becomes even more difficult to be able to do any kind of adjustment unless you know exactly to go to the, the back office and to access and put in your, your password. And so it's, it's just very, very distant from this whole concept of Shem Yimchok, yeah? Okay, so that's one argument that we could make. Number two, he says, Kitiva b'machshev al gav tzag. A tzag, I guess, is probably like a tablet, I would suppose. I don't know, anyone know the modern word tzag, what that means? I'm assuming it's uh, some kind of computer screen. Einam nech shavim ki kitiva ha'ausura mi deoraita. Ulegabe nitan liton kitzad ha'mekil she'he'elah ba'al prima godem ha'nizkar le'el. The prima godem, which we didn't see inside, brings an opinion that says that when the erasure or the writing of text on the particular surface that you're dealing with does not involve a malacha de oraisa, then there's no problem of shema yimchok because it's a, derab, it's a takana to a takana, it's a derabonan on top of another derabonan. <coughs> and therefore the argument is, is that when uh, the writing of text on a computer screen is not a de oraisa, it's only a derabonan, at least according to some poskim. And therefore, there's no problem of Shema Yimchok by a computer screen text that's on a computer screen at all. So therefore, to read letters that are passing by you on a computer screen, on an LED screen, would not be a problem. Of Shema Yimchok, at least. And number three, Ha'iyun beluchot eilu hamutsavim b'makom tzibori na'ase b'derech klal b'nochachot shel acherim sh'yicholim lahasiru lahazkir l'chol habale shanot mashu beluchot she'shabbat hayom. And finally, 
we're in a public sphere, like the Rashba has said. And in a public setting, there's no problem of Shema Yimchot because we'll remind each other. So if we're walking into the lobby, into shul, or we're walking into the Beis Medrash, and I'm tempted to want to change the Zmanim, or to change something that I see on the screen, since we're, we're with a group of people, you don't have to worry about that because we'll be reminding each other. Now, all of these arguments that Rabbi Cohen has presented all address the issue of Shema Yimchok. What about Shtari Ejotos? Okay, so he says that. He says, Svarot elu poterot et isur kriyat harishimot v'shabbat. That solves the problem of the prohibition of reading that which is written or engraved on Shabbos. Adai notra bayata kriya v'shtari Ejotot. But we still have the problem of Shtari Ejotos. Ulam gam legabe yesh makom lahalot kama sibot leheter. But we too, we can offer the following reasons to be lenient as far as Shtari Ejotos as well. Aleph. Hatosafot higbilu et ha'isur rak l'shtari So number one, we saw that Tosfos only limit, they limit the prohibition of Shtari Ejotos exclusively to business affairs and not to other affairs that are not business oriented. And that's the heter that so many of us rely upon to read the newspaper on Shabbos, right? That because if, right? I just want to make sure that we understand that. Yes, if you read the newspaper on Shabbos, so you're, you're holding like Tosmas, not like the Shulchan Aruch. Right? And, and by the way, that's not an indictment. I'm not saying this is a criticism. I'm just saying this is a reality. Yeah. Number two. Lucha uta kivuim bakir harehim kechaki kabakotel ve'en hadavar mitchalef bishtarot. Number two, he says that the boards, these electronic boards that are, are, um, are attached to the wall are very dissimilar from Shtari Hejotos because Shtari Hejotos are documents and this is something that's on a computer screen and therefore one could argue that they won't be interchanged so easily. I have a little bit of a problem with that because people have documents now on their tablets that they walk around with. And so I think that as the technology advances, we're going to be... Do you know that now that you can, uh, you can buy groceries with your iPhone just by holding up your iPhone to a scanner to, with, your, with your credit card information? So I don't know that this necessarily, this argument really... This, this, this argument will hold for 10 minutes in between the technological, technological leaps that we're making, right? I don't think it's going to hold for more than about 10 minutes. But that's the argument that he makes, and I think he even acknowledges that it may, it may not be. He says that nowadays, he even makes the point of, our, of acknowledging that this, may, this argument may not hold water for that much longer. Number three, Gimel. Keven shemidubar beluchot hamutzavim bebatei kneset uveem tsuutam modiim al zmanet filot v'shiurim harei midubar bedavar mitzvah bedavar mitzvah uretzorchei harabim. We saw also that when it comes to a Dvar Mitzvah, like we brought from the, uh, from the Mishnah Bura, that we can be lenient, right, and allow you to read in sh with, from Shtari Hajotos on Shabbos if it's Ladvar Mitzvah. And since this board is announcing Shiurim, the Zmanei Tfila, when we're going bowling or to the Bills game, these are all Tzorche Mitzvah, right? So uh, you could be lenient when it comes to those kinds of announcements, right? Dalit. Hakriya naases bederch shall iyun bilvad velo bekol ram. The hareka amr leel if ya Mordechai biyun bilvad hadavar muta. We didn't see the Mordechai inside, but the Mordechai says that the only time that shtori hajotos are prohibited is if you read it aloud. But if you're just scanning it with your eyes, then it's okay. You notice the Shulchan Aruch did not was not that permissive. But again, Shulchan Aruch the Machaber is very machmir here, more so than some of the other Rishonim, and it seems that in our day of, tech, of technology. We have a right to be mako like the uh, like the other Rishon. Number five, hey. Lefi Amagen Avraham. Ha'iyun b'rishimat orchim shezimnu shezumnu l'seuda hutar misham minhag Yisrael Torah. V'yachen luach modaot v'bate knesset kvar naase leminhag. The Magen Avraham has an innovative sheet, and he says the reason why that today we do allow you to read a guest list is because Minag Yisrael, it's because it's become so widely accepted within Klal Yisrael that to try and ban it would be sort of, uh, it, would, it would end up in, in, in really something, it, it would end up in something tragic. You can't impose something once the cat's out of the bag. 
once once it's become so widespread that this is something that is a widespread practice, you have to allow it. And therefore, he says, he wants to make the same argument. He says these uh, announcement boards are so ubiquitous in synagogues that there's no reason to ban them just because they're now electronic. He says, however, one could argue that uh, we're living in an age where it's not so widespread yet. It's just now beginning to be spread out through all of Tfutzot Yisrael, throughout the Jewish uh, communities. As shuls get more budgets and more technologically savvy, they are installing these electronic boards. And maybe now, at this evolutionary phase, maybe we can't rely on this mug in Avram so easily because it's not something that's so widespread. Maybe we can only continue to allow people to read from, you know, the manually printed lists. And Vavi says, <laughs> He says, he brings down from one of the Rishonim that the whole prohibition of Shtari Hejotos is specifically directed towards those texts which a person is going to fixate and spend a lot of time reading. Okay? Kagon Dyuknaot Shal Ma'asim, such as paintings with captions underneath. They're going to captivate the individual. You're going to spend a lot of time focusing and reading and thinking and contemplating. That's what that's the that's the genre of Shtari Hejotos. However, if it's something that you pass by very rapidly, that the chlal is not going to fall under the rubric of shtari hajotas. Damesha haodaot hanir shamot al gabi aluchot elektroniim hapishutim enam bichlal eila. Therefore, it would seem to me that the announcements and the times posted and the shiurim uh, announcements that are posted in electronic boards that are very simply displayed do not fall under that pro- problem. Do not are not subsumed under this issue of you're going to be looking at pictures with captions and it'll captivate you and it'll take away time. And that's really become you become immersed in that in that uh, in that pursuit. He says, "Ach luchot me hasuk hachadash, shenirim ki masach televizia mitchalef kashe yoter laakel bahem." He says, however, the new boards, which of course was what we're getting. In other words, we have the the one which is just the standard LCD or LED display, which we have in the base medrash, which basically just has the changing times, the zmane the zmane hatfila just on black and white. But what about the really big screen Samsung or LD big screen TV displays that you mount onto the wall? They look like televisions. And every few seconds, there's a rotation. There's going to be a big, beautiful picture of the rabbi. And then, you know, he'll be throwing a football to invite you to the Bills game. And uh, who knows what's going to be on there. You know, they'll be able to even superimpose the rabbi's face on some, someone else's body. You know, they'll, they'll be doing all these different things that they'll be able to do. And, um, and, uh, and do all of these different captions. And then the youth department will want to put something fun with balloons and clowns and and then before you know it, you're going to have people standing at this display. What's one thing, they won't come in until after Yishtabach. That'll be one problem. <laughs> right? They maybe will stop the t- talking problem. We should, we should put one on top of the Aron Kodesh. That's a great idea. Yeah. They'll stop the talking. Yeah. But no, so the, the problem is that when you walk into shul, right, so people are going to be fixated if you make it too eye-grabbing. If it's too eye-grabbing, it's going to create a problem that we've said, which will make it more problematic for Shtari Hajjotas. And this, I think this is, to me, this is probably the most relevant issue that we have to really focus on in deciding and determining how we're going to be using these displays on Shabbos. I think, look, the whole objective of these displays, let's face it, we want to make our shul user-friendly and very inviting. And when a guest walks into the shul, we want to have something eye-grabbing to get to, hey, this is a happening place, right? But on Shabbos, I would argue that we have to change the display and we have to just have text without illustrations, just announcing what's going on for that day. And, and perhaps maybe a shear for that week or maybe a schedule for that week would be one of the displays. But it should be much more subdued than the types of images and even, uh, even videos that you will find on these more sophisticated screens. And therefore, it's better to <laughs> refrain from doing those kinds of publicity, those, those more uh, fancy types of publicity, especially if the issues that you're advertising have to do with weekday activities like going, you know, 
going to some social activity that's taking place during the week. Okay, so as we so as the, so as we develop the technology, and I'll be working with the tech guys to talk about what kinds of displays we should have on these screens, and they'll be dynamically changing. We will probably be instructing them to keep a much more subdued kind of display on Shabbos, so that we get you inside to daven and as quickly as possible. Yes, Joy. Sure. And you will require people who come here. You want to see if they are in the show. You want people to join the show. All kinds of people. You know, right, right, right. I, I understand. There has to be some kind of balance, yeah, um, in order to be able to conform to what is being advocated over here. You'll notice that um, posters are okay. We, we, there, there seems to be a very accepted uh, practice within Kalal Yisrael to allow for the use of posters with, that are very colorful and bright. And that doesn't seem to be a problem, even though that would seem to be fall under the rubric of um, siurim, of illustrations with captions underneath. It seems like nowadays there doesn't seem to be the same problem. Now, I think that there are people who could argue that this is all just academic and we can uh, carte blanche, everything goes. But I still think that when it comes to Shabbos, we should create a difference in our electronic boards and electronic signage. Um, that would be my uh, suggestion, um, based upon uh, the, the issues that the post can discuss, at least to remind ourselves that, that it's Shabbos, because this could easily devolve and degenerate further once the technology becomes greater and greater, and then eventually there'll be sound, and then, you know, there'll be, you know, who knows what it'll turn into. I'm just saying, we have sound already, I'm just saying that. And, you know, they'll announce the scores and stuff. Yes? <laughs> what are the digital photo frames that people have nowadays where they, you have a picture changing in your house? You have same yeah, it's a, good, it's a good point. I, 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 they're, they're not captioned, though. They're just the, no, no, the, the, just the, just the photo. Good. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that those things are pretty much accepted to be okay unless there's a... Unless there's the ability that you have to, let's say, you know, you want to, well, is, can one argue that Shema Yimchok, that you may come to adjust them? Let's say, you know, it's your ex-sister-in-law, and she, you just discovered that she's part of the rotation, <laughs> and you want to get rid of her on Shabbos. You have to make sure that you don't have the button easily accessible to press delete on the, on the photo frame. Right? Okay. Yes, Moshe. What's that? It seems, it seems from the Mishnah Bura that that's not enough of a mitzvah. Because if it was, then any, any Suda Shabbos is, 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 uh, is Tzarche Mitzvah, right? See, it seems that way. I didn't say that. I just said business-related news you shouldn't read on Shabbos. 